In this video we're going to learn how to set up uh, six PCR reactions from a PCR master mix. So first I'm going to go ahead and grab a 0.6 mil tube, a sterile 0.6 mil tube to set up my master mix, which is why I'm ethanoling my gloves off before I reach into this autoclave beaker here. So I'll pull out one tube, sterile tube, to set up my master mix. Um, in our lab, we use Q5 polymerase for cloning, so if you want to find a recipe uh, for the PCR uh, reactions, you should just look at the NEB website. So I'm going to begin by adding, let's see, I'm preparing six PCR reactions, so I'm going to prepare 6.2 reactions worth of master mix to account for mixing lo or pipetting losses. So I'm going to take 139.5 microliters of RO water. I'm going to take 62.5 microliters each of this Q5 reaction buffer. It's really important to make sure that this, well, this is well mixed after you pull it out of the freezer. Um, the Q5 reaction buffer, some of the salts in that tend to precipitate out uh, upon freezing. So I already vortexed it, but I'm going to pipette up and down a couple times just to make sure that that's properly mixed. Okay, so now I'm taking 62 microliters of that. I'm also going to add 62 microliters of the high GC enhancer because my amplicons have a GC content of about 80 percent. For guidelines on the use of the high GC enhancer, again, I would encourage you to refer to the NEB website. After that, I'm going to add 15.5 microliters of uh, my reverse primer, which I've had to cover here because um, it has proprietary information on the label. Again, pipetting up and down to mix at each step. Hmm. There's a droplet of liquid in there that I would rather not remain behind. There we go. Got that down. And now I'm going to add 12.4 microliters of DNTPs. So I'll just just I've actually I've actually doubled the amount of DNTPs um, that I'm adding compared to the original recipe. And the reason for that is uh, Q5 polymerase is a proofreading is a proofreading polymerase, um, but having free DNTPs in solution after the reaction completes uh, will decrease the rate constant of its exonuclease activity. So you can slow the extent to which the Q5 chews up your uh, synthesized DNA strands. Um, now, so again, I'm adding 12.4 microliters of DNTPs. Again, I've also vortexed my, my DNTPs and then spun them back down because uh, it looks like some of the DNTPs, um, they don't precipitate out, but the just the way it freezes, the concentration localizes, so you'll see swirling if you, um, if you mix this before you pipette it. So you want to make sure that you're actually getting the amount of DNTPs that you expect. And again, pipetting that by mixing. So the last thing I'm going to add for the master mix is my Q5 polymerase, which I've brought out to my bench in a, an ice block here. You always want to add, if you're preparing a single PCR reaction, you want to add your Q5 polymerase last. If you're preparing a master mix, you want to add your Q5 polymerase to the master mix last. Okay, so now I'm adding 3.1 microliters of my Q5 polymerase. 
Um, let's see, we've got this old tube, but I don't think there's anything left in there. Yeah, I don't know why anyone put that back in the block. Okay. Again, I'm taking 3.1 microliters of Q5 polymerase. We use Q5 for cloning instead of TAC because it's a high fidelity polymerase with an error rate of about 1 in either, I think, between 10 to the 5th and 10 to the 6th nucleotides incorporated. Again, pipetting up and down to make sure that I get all of my Q5 Paul into there. Okay, so now all I need to add to each tube are the um, reverse primers and the templates for each reaction. So I'm going to go ahead and aliquot out my master mix. I'm going to add 47.5 microliters of my master mix to each tube. Of course, you can prepare different master mixes. For example, uh, so the reverse primer, or I guess actually this is the forward primer. Whoops. I'll go ahead and change that just for posterity. Uh, my, my forward primer here is the same for all of these tubes. But if it weren't, um, you know, I could just prepare a master mix without the forward primer. Or, for example, if I had the same template for every tube but it was different primers, I could add my template to the master mix. So the master mix that you prepare is dependent on what PCR reactions you're going to be doing later on. Okay, so again, I'm going, ahead, going to go ahead and add 47.5 microliters of my master mix to each tube. To each PCR tube. <clears throat> Our PCR tubes are not sterile. Uh, when they're produced by either VWR or Fisher, they're certified nuclease free. Um, but we don't we don't autoclave them or anything, and uh, I don't handle these sterile. The reason I'm working under a flame is mostly to protect my reagents from having dust settle in them. It's not really necessary to keep your PCR sterile because, again, you're going to be thermocycling that between 72 and 99 degrees Celsius, so that's going to kill anything in nature any DNA cells that might get in there. So really working under the flame here is just to keep our reagents clean. And You'll note that I mixed my master mix by pipetting before beginning to aliquot it out into these tubes because we want to make sure that these all have the same concentration. Sorry, my uh Colleagues are being a bit loud in the background. Oh. And I guess. So we have pretty lousy pipettes, so even adding 0.2 uh, or increasing the amount of master mix by 0.2 wasn't quite enough. I think um, I might just add the part of the rest of that to this tube. Ignore that kindly. One day we will get nicer pipette, pipettes. So I'm just going to toss that tube because it's empty now. Now to each one of these I'm going to add my, uh, my reverse primer in order. I've already got the forward primer in there. So to each tube I'm going to add 2.5 microliters of the reverse primer. I don't really think we have to worry about the reverse primer um, precipitating out when we freeze them, but just for uh, posterity's sake I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix my primer before I add it to the reaction.
Now, the templates that I'm going to be using for these PCRs are actually themselves PCR reactions. I'm doing a nested PCR, but the procedure would be the same. I'm just going to take 0.2 microliters. You need very, very little template. I'm just going to take 0.2 microliters of, uh, of my template and add it to the relevant tubes. Um, I don't know about PCR in general, but I, I think this is the case. PCR is very robust in the amount of template that you can put into your reaction, which is why I'm not going to bother measuring the concentration. I, I know from experience that these uh, reactions should work relatively well. Uh, if I were having trouble with my PCR, I'd probably quantify the amount of template that I was adding to each step, but it shouldn't be a problem as long as you're between, say, 10 picograms and a microgram of DNA, you should be okay on your PCR. Maybe maybe less than a microgram of template. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna add 0.2 microliters of template. I'm really not even worried about the glass milk in the bottom. Again, because remember, we can we can do colony PCR. So if our PCR will will tolerate the presence of bacterial fragments then it will tolerate some inert glass powder. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix all of these by pipetting. I'll just reset my 10 microliter pipette to 10, the maximum volume, and that should be plenty enough to get good mixing of each of these reactions. Okay, there we are. Now I'm ready to go ahead and load these to the PCR machine.